Hey guys, my name is Andrew. Andrew is an amazingly creative, wonderful human being that just brightens my life every single day. I absolutely adore him. Very creative, always had wonderful ideas about things. He just had an imagination like no other child in the classroom. I just really enjoy different types of arts, cartooning, drawings. The more surreal it gets, the better. Andrew's artistic sensibilities are laced with humor, but then oftentimes have really complex stories behind them. Like, I didn't have this imagination when I was that age. Basically, the best way to describe it is tripping on acid. It's got a little bit of humorous attitude about him as well. He's just so funny. He makes me laugh. First thing he said to me was, what is a curvy, classy lady like you gonna teach a boy like me? It's weird, I never actually thought about that. He can say something that just cuts through the crap that most of us hide behind. It's not you, I'm just bored sitting here. And you'll just be like, oh my gosh, that was hysterical, or that was, wow, really deep for somebody who's nine. He's a deep thinker. We'll be talking about something, and all of a sudden, there is this consciousness of understanding that I was, I never grasped until I was like in my late 20s, early 30s very thoughtful. Just kind of comes out of him, just flows. He really had a very sensitive heart. If somebody else was hurt, you could really tell that he cared. Very empathetic. Always overly sweet. Sometimes like sugar hurts your teeth a little. Andrew is one of my favorite people on the planet. We started noticing things in Andrew when he was uh, two. Oh, I noticed it super early. As you're looking at peers with Andrew. Seeing how they were relating to their parents or their environment, I could tell that he was a little bit different in terms of how he reacted. Like if he was hurt, it seemed much more exaggerated than in some of the other children that he was playing with. The other one was speech development. When he was in his twos, he should have been saying words and he wasn't. And he always had to touch things. Andrew was touching, 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 and then it was noises. I just hated loud noises. He would tend to overreact because the noise would bother him. So that was another clue for me that something was going on and we needed to start trying to figure it out. Andrew was diagnosed on Christmas Eve. So we had waited six months to get into the right neurologist, like the best neurologist in the city. In between when that appointment was made and Christmas Eve, I was diagnosed with uh, invasive cancer. So there was a lot of upheaval going on. I was dealing with all of that, but still needed to know what exactly was happening with my son. So after six rounds of chemo and all of that that was happening with my body, then I got the diagnosis. And it was very interesting because I had all of these notes and all of this information, like just literally this much, that I brought to the neurologist. And he asked a couple questions, spoke to Andrew, watched him walk, did all of these things. When the doc guy was saying, okay, Andrew, just walk from this end of the room to that one in the back. And knew instantly what the diagnosis was with Asperger's and OCD and anxiety. And it was relief at first. It was like, yes, it's about time someone recognized <laughs> what's going on with my child. But was I excited to go, oh, yay, now we know? No. You know, it was heart-wrenching because once I understood what it meant, I knew that his frustration was not going to get easier, but I knew that it was doable. And I felt like now we've got him, we're empowered in the sense that now we know what's going on with him. We know how we can move forward in terms of meeting his needs so that he can develop. You know, you would think that Andrew would not be the priority, but he became the priority to friends and family who were here that could pour into him when I didn't, when I couldn't. So even though I thought I was going to survive, the fact was always it was aggressive and it was growing. And if I passed, what would happen to Andrew? The way that the family is, so I mean, they overcome everything. So then when the cancer diagnosis was better, 
and treatment was great and you know I clearly knew that I was beating it. I just focused on, okay, I'm better, and what are we gonna do to make Andrew's life the best that it possibly can be because life's so short. But at the same time, I think it was a strengthening tool for my relationship with Lori and also with Andrew. It just like binded us even closer together to move forward as a family and as a couple. And There is nothing that can be thrown at you that you can't overcome. Just enjoy the ride. I wake up in the morning and I'm happy and Don and Andrew wake up and they're like, oh, shut up. They're an interesting couple because they're such opposite people. As opposite as you can get. But they work. Amazing people, amazing people. I don't think I could have found better parents. Ivy summed it down to like we're a battery. She's the positive energy and I'm the negative energy <laughs> in a good way because this battery works in such a way that it keeps us moving forward in a healthy direction. Don is very creative and amazing and introverted. He's really easygoing, laid back. We always drew together after work. He was pretty much the coolest guy I knew. And I call him Donnie Darko because he just sees things in not an optimistic way. A realist. <laughs> and then I'm a realistic optimist. She's so optimistic and looking forward that everything's gonna be good. I think people should be happy. I think people should care. I think life should be fun. I've never met anybody who will just sit there and be like, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll think I'll do it. And then five minutes later, she's called like 10 people and everyone's on board and okay, we're gonna do this now. That has helped so much in the process with Andrew's growth is, all right, here's a situation, we're gonna deal with it and we're gonna keep going. She's just always supportive and even if I go into one of my like delusional rants about this and that and the other stuff, she will just sit there and just listen. I could never imagine life without her. She is Andrew's number one advocate. When Andrew was first diagnosed, it was important for me to get as much information as I could. There really wasn't a whole lot of rules or things to follow at that time. So I just kind of made our own path. I just was like, what do we need to accomplish? How can I help them? I tried to understand as much as there was about it. And then basically just attacked anything that came our way that seemed to be a frustration with him. And how can we help that? I think the, the biggest challenge for me was sending Andrew to school. Prior to coming to kindergarten, Andrew had been in a smaller class in a special education program with more adults in the room. So when he came into the kindergarten setting, it was kind of like somebody just sort of threw him into the file. Andrew's kindergarten was so amazingly hard. Like literally every day, he would go in there and just melt down. Like serious meltdown. And just cry and scream, because he just, he was so fixated on robots at the time. And the only thing he wanted to do was play with robots. And she was trying to teach him, you know, other skills and, he just didn't want to do it. This is why I feel annoyed, I'm ticked, I can't take it anymore. I just want to yell and I'm telling him to stop. So here's this child who has come to me and he's somewhere that he sees as both disinteresting and irrelevant. He would just come home exhausted, where he was just so frustrated. <sighs> it's not really fun memory to look back on. And I knew that something had to change, so I literally just went when is he frustrated? How is he frustrated? What happens right before he's frustrated? What happens right after he's not frustrated? Like literally dissecting his day from the moment he got up to the moment he went to bed. Listening to what he needed and just adapting around to make sure that he was happy and healthy. And we worked together and in the course of the year, I think we both came to the conclusion that for Andrew to be in a fully included room with little support probably wasn't going to give him the best educational experience. The parent being involved with the classroom teacher is a key to success. Unfortunately, it's not always um, as easy as just saying that, but I think especially in the case of Andrew, having that support on both ends is really, really a test to how successful he's been. I wanted him in a, a school setting. So I was like, well, if he's going to be in a school setting, then how do I make it the best for him during the most frustrating moments of his day? But as I was noticing when he was frustrated, it was between lunch and recess. Well, yeah, because everyone's just running around and yelling. So if that's the most frustrating moment and there's nothing there to help him, how do I solve that problem? What applies to one child and its environment is completely different than how you need to possibly raise another child in, in its own environment. I mean, we're all individuals, we're all unique. So you've got to be flexible in terms of 
adapting to what their needs are. So I literally just contacted Kent State, had an idea to go, what if a grad student came into the situation, into the school, during recess, during lunch, and sat there and helped him into how can you relate to another child? He did not play with other children. In school, he played on his own. Like, I always just sat on the edge of the playground, just sort of like, I always took a wood chip and just sort of like drew stick in the dirt. Andrew was very individualized, so he didn't want to share. He didn't understand what that was about, so he would play by himself a lot. He wanted so badly to be a part, though. And the fact that he wasn't at that age able to socialize with other children was probably my biggest fear, that, that if you don't have that camaraderie that comes naturally, I know that it's really hard. So we found this amazing woman who wanted to be a school psychologist. She wanted to be in the school setting. Got clearance from the school with the teachers, and she came and worked with Andrew four, five, six, seven hours a day, two or three days a week, where she was with him all the time. Balancing what he wanted to do while also helping him initiate some of those social interactions, conversation starters sitting at the lunch table rather than sitting by himself with a pile of dirt. So that a child would come over and want to be engaged with this very cute, you know, energetic grad student and allow him to have conversation about it and bring him in and make, you know, and talk to him on a one-on-one. -on -one. We had prepared some jokes and then that was really a good way to start a conversation for, you know, him to tell a joke, someone else to tell a joke. She sort of heard me along to it, always making me think it was my idea. My job with Andrew was awesome. It was just such a unique experience because it's not every day that a parent hires an outsider to go into a school with their child. So I think that that allowed him to not be as fearful or afraid or frustrated because it became fun. He was looking forward to seeing, oh, what are we going to do next time? Because there was always creativity. When you have one-on-one -on -one with a child, it just allowed him to really be himself once that trust was created. She definitely put a lot of faith in me that I could help her son there during that first grade year. She got that human development was where to focus. And if you focus on development, what evolves is a holistic understanding of that individual that respects them and meets them in a way that complements the whole individuals that they are. He grew so much that from a doctor's perspective, from a teacher's perspective, by the time he hit second and third grade, when he was into a mainstream classroom, teachers were like, Andrew's great. I felt like working with him was, was very easy, very natural. He had really good coping strategies as far as how he dealt with other students and how he dealt with his frustrations, which was very impressive. He was one of those kids that when you came to work every day, you were glad to see him. After we used the grad student in the school setting, that led me to believe that the summer camps that he was doing was as frustrating as lunch and recess at school. So we were, it was fun and they were going on all these activities to all these really cool places, but he wasn't having fun. I would probably have to say a little frustrating. So one summer we got the idea that what if we bring somebody from our family that we trust and do a camp one-on-one. -on -one. Like they would always find someone like really energetic, quirky, funny to just hang out with me for the entire three months of the summer. Camp Andrew was a blast. Oh my God, amazing. We get individuals who love Andrew for who he is. First of all, that, that was the core. And then what do they have to bring to the table of how to encourage and enrich Andrew's life in a three month period? My involvement with Camp Andrew was just going down through a checklist of people who would be good suitable candidates for Camp Andrew. Kara was when the ball really started to get rolling. She was very energetic and fun and ran all over the place with Andrew. We just basically did everything together. We went down to the lake, we saw movies, we went on nature walks. There was never really a dull moment there. Of course the main goal is always fun. You gotta have fun in life. She really spoke more into his emotional needs. Making sure that I supported Andrew in his development. Every time I see her, I just can't help but smile the entire time. I think because Andrew and I had a flow. I understood his language, we understood how to communicate with each other. She was one of the people that, even if it's just a tiny bit, actually helped form me today. I remember the summer with Nate that they would just run around and Nate took him to the pool. So Nate was showing him how to interact with kids in the pool and how you dunk somebody in the proper way. Nate was very instrumental there about developing Andrew's sense of humor. 
He pushed me to just sort of take a joke. Like, if something happened, just roll with it. Throw a joke back. Take it like a man. It was that and also just to get him out and uh, do some exercise as well. And That was the tricky part because he knew that it was a camp to help him get active and he immediately saw it as work. So you had to be careful and make sure everything was, no, we're just going to the pool. Let's go and have fun. He was just a fun guy to be around. He was always cracking a joke. He's always doing something. I'd be like, hey, let's play tag. Obviously, I'm a faster swimmer, so he got to work out trying to chase me. When he was with Riley, it was manning up and being tough. It was all about the physicality of him being aware of his body and knowing that he can do more. If you could have like the mental image of like the jarhead football player, that would be Riley. I was very excited about it, maybe a little bit too excited. I probably threw a little bit too much at him at first. I would always just do my best to just try and avoid it. Anything he could do to not have to work out. I'm hungry, I'm tired, I, can't, I don't want to do this. And we basically just fell into the big brother, little brother role where I would annoy him constantly, he would annoy me constantly. Because I knew that he didn't want to, but I knew once we got going that it would be a lot easier. He always just pushed me to go a little further. like. We were exercising, and I was done, I was tired, I felt like I was beat to the curb, but he always just said, come on, go, come on, a little more. My job was to whoop him into shape and to get him, you know, confident and healthy and strong. He toughened me up. Like, towards the end of the summer, it was his routine and he had no problem doing it. So one of the things we always did together was we always went down by the creek and we always, like, skipped stones and collected rocks. And I saw this mountain and I was like, yeah, let's climb that. And I'm like, can we again? And he's like, come on, let's just Let's climb it. So we start climbing. Of course, we're barefoot and there's rocks everywhere. And it's, I mean, it's terrible conditions. We're out mountain man right now. It's crazy. But we're getting halfway up and he's like, all right, let's go back down. I'm like, dude, we're halfway. Let's finish. Let's get up, let's get up to the top of this hill. Let's go. He's struggling. He's fighting. He's working hard. We get to the top of this hill and we look over and it's just, I mean, it's beautiful. And I'm like, look what you just did. Look how far you just came up that hill. Look how hard you worked to get to where you're at now. You know, he was obviously happy. He's up there yelling and he's got his hands up. We all shouted victory at the top of our lungs. Yeah. Victory, that's what it was. Victory! A life lived without really feeling like you lived it isn't really a life lived. And I think he also kind of felt that, like, look, look what I've done, look what I can do. Just the satisfaction of just knowing I didn't need to do this, but I did anyway, and I love it for it. The fact that we both grew, we kind of grew together. I think it like made me mature. And not just in the fact that I can just tolerate stuff, just in the fact of how I think and act. It enhanced his humor, it enhanced his empathy, it enhanced his intelligence. He's become smarter, that's for sure. But he's still kind. He's still nice. He's still always laughing, you know, making jokes. His progress is astounding. I think because everybody around him is part of like an Andrew team. There's only certain things that Lori and I can bring to the table that will help his development. It really is how can the team come together and help to encourage Andrew and do anything that he would need to help develop him as a person. Looking back over the years with Andrew, I realize he's gone from a boy who couldn't play with friends, was in his own world, to a boy who has a great sense of humor, who when he wants to make a change in his body or his life, he can make that change. And that's pretty incredible growth from a child who I wasn't sure would ever make mainstream school. I don't think Andrew would be that successful if there had not been early intervention, if there had not been everyday progress. I mean, everyday, non-stop working with Andrew. And I mean, he's only 14. He has, you know, what more is he gonna do? I can't wait to see. He's one of those kids, I gotta know what he does when he gets older. His imagination was so incredible. When Andrew was in my class, before he left, I knew that one day Andrew would be a famous artist. So I said, Andrew, I want an original Andrew and I want you to sign it because I know one day this is going to be uh, famous and you're gonna be famous for it, so I want one now. I think what really got me started drawing was my father. Well, I mean, of course, there's the proud dad thing, like he's following dad's footsteps, which is great. At the same time, though, it can be a little scary because, you know, the art world is tough. You know, there's a lot that comes with wanting to protect him and make sure that this is something he really wants to do as well, so. My biggest hope is that he's happy. It's as simple as that. Whatever he does in life, wherever he goes in life, my number one hope is that he ends up being happy wherever he is. There is a part of Andrew that is in all of us. Socially, we don't fit all the time. Emotionally, we're in deeper than we want to be. But I guarantee you there will be an obstacle in your life that comes and how, what is your perspective? 
how are you going to deal with it? Are you going to problem solve? Are you going to join with other people? Or are you going to retreat by yourself? I just think this will give people hope to overcome their obstacles. And yeah, this is about it.